Okay. <laughs> so it's such a privilege um, to have you here, Alec. It's really a privilege for all of us. It'll be a privilege for anyone watching. Oh, um, my God, that's what these are for. That's what these are for, that's why I'm bringing it up. Interrogation. <laughs> it's a real privilege to have you here, a real privilege for everyone here. So, Alec, I'm thinking about how, what I don't want to ask you, and I thought, I thought we'd start with a bit of history. Now, I don't go back as far as you, obviously. Not <laughs> 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 a joke. I remember that. But you know, I remember this room when I first came here in, I don't know, 1986, I think. In this room was a barn. You know, I remember you leading retreats later on where we were in the, in the refectory, in the shrine room. And the first iteration of the shrine room I remember is Sona and others doing the wood and ceiling. I remember, and, and um, came, came in, came, came in, in yeah, that's right. And then Chintamani, the orange walls yeah. with the badras and flames, and, and in, in this place, a large white stupa with some again by Chintamani. Chintamani. So, and I remember that shrine room being from where we'd come from, you know, from from that from the, the reflector. I remember that being quite a step. So I thought we'd start with when, when did this imagination of the Shrine Room grow out of that iteration, that first iteration? Uh, well, in, in, a, in a sense, it was, it was sort of going on all the time, because the stupa was only a, a sort of, as far as I was aware, it was only ever considered as a sort of temporary mm -hmm. thing until we sorted it out, because it's such a strange space in a way, mm -hmm. you know, and having the tears, you know, which I think originally was Sona's idea mm. to get more people in or something. But, um, and I was working here in the sense of when we were doing the Going for Refuge retreats mm. from, what was that, 88 onwards. Mm. Mm. And um, all the time I was doing drawings of potential shrine rooms, you know, and I had this scheme for when it was the, what's now the dining room of doing the eight manifestations of Padmasambha all the way around the walls, you know, on, on sort of hangings. Mm -hmm. But of course I was working on the retreat, so there's no time mm -hmm. to do anything. You know, I remember you being in a little caravan surrounded by oh, junk. Junk wagons. <laughs> <laughs> junk for art for yeah, junk. Yeah. <laughs> Material. Materials, that's <laughs> just raw materials. Yeah. So you know, I was doing drawings, and then when we came here, I was doing drawings. I've still got them somewhere. And I had this whole idea, because this, there was this big window here, of having the shrine in like steps and having a, a walking figure, like he was coming into the shrine room. Mm -hmm. But then after a bit, after we'd been using this shrine room for some time, I realised that it wasn't really conducive to it being a practice room. And someone trotting around, you know, while it's... <laughs> you know, I mean, the idea that you have a... A, a sit, sitting figure, which, you know, because that's what you're doing most of the time. Mm. But um, then, when they got rid of the stupa, I don't know who came up with the idea of having the painting, you know, which mm. is now in the other yeah. shrine. And again, that was meant to be a sort of halfway house mm. while we still decided what was best for this space. Mm. The, originally there was an idea of turning that whole opening into a, what they called a stained glass window, mm. which I was not keen on, but for obvious reasons. Well, what, what the people who were responsible for this aberration meant was uh, <laughs> <laughs> painted glass, not stained, oh, oh, stained <laughs> glass window. Yeah, that's quite a different thing. Yeah, yeah. Of the refuge tree. Oh, uh, really? And I thought, you know, God. I, can't, I, couldn't, I couldn't see it working as a focal point. You know. mm. Again, it wasn't any of us. Huh? It wasn't our one. It wasn't our one. Nobody watching. No, no, no. So the painting was here, but then it was Lokeshra who really wanted there to be a Rupa. Mm. You know, and I tried for ages to talk him out of it. You know, sort of. Subtly, I thought. <laughs> I just couldn't see quite how it would work because once we got the painting there, it's all to do with sight lines and things, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. nobody being in front. Mm -hmm. you know. 
Um, but he was so insistent and so enthusiastic that in the end, I, you know, I, I did give it. I, I still, to this day, say that it's Lokeshwa's lo energy that got this made. Mm. Mm. You know, because it's quite a big job. I mean, I must admit, three-dimensional stuff I find much easier than painting. Mm -hmm. It just sort of, you know, just sort of happens. Um, but still, it, it was six months of pretty full-on, mm. you know, work. But it was Lokeshwa, because he'd be round every week, you know. I could put it on the shrine, just like that. You know, it's like just saw the couple of bits off. You know. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed to think it would be sort of unrecognisable until sort of two weeks before the end, when suddenly it would look like a Buddha. You know <laughs> what I mean? But, so, uh, but I, I, I did say, I thought it would, basically, when I said it would be coloured, and people said, well, what does that mean? You know, rather than looking like fake bronze or mm. fake wood or whatever. Mm. I said, well, it would be like the painting, but 3D, mm. you know. So that's what I attempted to do. And I, mean, I must say, I mean, you know, obviously not everyone likes it. And, well, you gave a talk, didn't you, to explain to, you know, the Philistines. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I was completely happy with what I'd done, mm -hmm. which is fairly rare for me. Mm -hmm. So I want to come back to the roof for a minute, because... Yeah. Kind of thing I want to get onto it. That, but, but that's how it got there. That's how it it's got all there. down to Lokeshwa. And like I remember the idea of the tree right, arising. You're trying to work out how to use the window, weren't you? Well, that was Padma Jyoti's idea. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Even when the painting was there, she said you ought to make all the stuff around the edges because she didn't like the window. Right. She said you ought to turn it into, into the tree. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's a brilliant idea. Mm. So we're going to come back to the roof in a minute, but because I, for me, the turning point was that original Shakyamuni that's now been the, the second shrine. It, it seemed to me um, when I first saw it, I, it seemed like a, uh, you know, a, a watershed in your own work. I don't know whether that's how you experienced, but it, it felt like a new Buddha, uh, a new vision of the Buddha with this, with this, uh, you know, the, the, the squares that now are in the on the tree in the painting and the sense of something like a uh, Byzantine mosaic, um, something ancient about it. It felt like a new, I don't know whether, it, I was wondering whether it felt like that to you, did it feel like a watershed? No, no, not at the time it didn't. Mm. I mean, the, the gold squares came because I look a lot at Japanese stuff, that's oh. my sort of favourite, oh. you know, personally. Mm. Not the painting so much, but the sculptures, because a lot of them are wood carvings, you know, so they, they have a sort of, a three-dimensional sensibility mm. that a lot of other cultures don't have, mm. you know, because they're carved in wood. I mean, not everything, but a lot of this. And what I noticed was, with a lot of the old roofers, where they've been done with gold leaf, because the gold leaf goes on in these little squares, mm. <coughs> over time, as it begins to wear, which it does, the little squares start showing. Mm. And I always really liked the old roofers, where you could see these little where it's like sort of slightly patchwork, slightly threadbare sort of look. Mm. And that's where all that idea came from, mm. you know. I mean, that, that, that original shock, I mean, it felt very big, didn't it? Did it feel, it felt like a big statement? And a uh, yeah, I suppose, yeah. I mean, the thing is, most of what happened with that painting is after I'd done it, oh. you know, because I didn't get asked to do public stuff, you know, mostly what I'd done was mm things for people's own practice, you know, for their sadhanas. Mm. And I do paintings <coughs> which sort of took it, well, I was trying to do the paintings they would do if they could paint, mm. you know, so I'd listen to them talking about their practice and, mm. or I'd ask them questions about their practice and all, you know, all sorts of different ways because, you know, different people have very different approaches. But it's like trying to get inside other people's imaginations, which are fascinating. Discipline. So I thought, I want to do the paintings they want, not, not, not me. Mm. So I'd actually end up doing paintings that I didn't particularly like. You know, but I mean, I'd done them as well as I could, mm. but, you know, it was their sensibility, not mine. Mm. Um, so public stuff, I hadn't done much of, mm. you know. So this is, a, this, all this was a completely different... Have you done any by then? I can't remember. Is there any... I can't think of it. 
Because the LBC was later. Yeah, um, and, a, a lot later. And the Norwich one, oh, the trip, it, that that they that came out of the, the first painting here because mm. they wanted a painting of Savannah came down to see me when I was halfway through doing the, mm. the painting for here. Mm. Did a Rupa for Manchester. I did a Rupert for Manchester, yeah. Mm. Um, well, I did a number of public things which didn't end up public. <laughs> <laughs> Skips or... <laughs> a lot of those old paintings, actually. People it did say it saved out of Skips yeah. or Bonfires, one of them. Really? I mean, that, that painting of Shockham, I mean, it had a big effect, I think. Well, it yeah, subsequently it did, because suddenly it's like... You know, I was getting calls from people at different centres to say, can you do one for us, just like Pat Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, How irritating. And I thought, oh, yeah. <laughs> Curious. How does that feel, being asked just to reproduce one? I don't, don't mean take any notice. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, you know, I don't mean that, you know, sort of cynically in a way. I mean, it's like, you know, you have to make something. I'm very keen on things being site-specific. Mm. It's like this Rupert. If you took this Rupert out and stuck it in the middle of the front lawn, it would look extremely odd. Well, if you think it's odd already, I mean, it would look odder, you know. Um, because it's built for this room. Mm. It's to activate this internal space, you know, this sort mm. of volume of space. Because that's what sculpture did. You know, I trained primarily as a sculptor, mm. you know. And the thing of activating space because sculpture, if it doesn't affect the space around it, then it's not worth, you know, being there, sort mm. of thing. Mm. You know, it's got to appear to be bigger than it is, and that's because of its energy. You know, it's like, like people, you know, when you see dead people, they look very tiny. Mm. You know, they look like little sort of well-made wax models of themselves, but all a bit smaller, mm. you know. Mm. I used to work in a mortuary, so I saw lots of, you know. Let, let's go on to... Uh, I can't decide which order I want to go in, but let, let's talk about the, the, the Rupert because when I first saw it, I was really shocked by it. Um, but it wasn't finished, was it, when you first saw it? No, I wasn't finished, but I was even more shocked when I saw it finished. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked when I saw it in the studio and really shocked here. The first thing that struck me about it is it's a, it felt like an anti-classic. That's mm. it. That you... Because what, what normally people do when they try and create um, an image of the ideal, at least in the so-called West, wherever the West is nowadays, but you know, it, at least in the modern world, is that they refer back to Roman and Greek work. You know, they refer back to the classic dimension, the, the, the appearance of timelessness, um, the stone, the impersonal stone. They'd never have fake grass. They'd never have painted images like this. Well, they found, did actually, didn't they? They did paint them, yeah, but yeah. It's it's all the Greek stuff was painted it's all painted like on the fairground. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but we sort of neatly sort of bleached that out into this yeah. sort of stone. Do you, I mean, that was my first incident. It was a kind of anti classic, and then it was you pushed it into the space with us. Instead of sitting in a axe, sort of half disappeared, it actually pushed, even though it wasn't a walking figure, you'd sort of pushed it into the state. The, the, the room with us. I found it almost. I remember those first few retreats I came with the figure here. It felt like as you came in, the the Rupert was was a, a presence in the room, almost a, a, a pushing presence. You know, a, 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 an eruption into the room, not something that sort of stood back in the room. I don't know whether that was your an anti-classic in it being sort of pushed well, towards it. Again, that comes from Japanese. Right, you know, right. a lot of Japanese shrines are you can completely circumambulate them, yeah. and you know you see. Um, well, I mean I've not been to Japan, but I mean you see photos, and it's like these things are definitely three dimensional. Mm. Whereas you know Buddhist sculpture, for want of a better word, is quite often a sort of relief yeah. that just happens to have been sort of pulled out of it from the background. Mm. Yeah. You get it with the Tibetan, even the bronzes and things where you notice the lotus petals don't go all the way around the back. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. they go that far around and then they think, well, you know, don't bother with that because no one will see it, so they think because it's around the back. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's the sort of tradition because it's very frontal. It's not a 3D thing, but the Japanese are very, you know, they've got that awareness of the third dimension. So in a way, 
it'd be nice if it was even further out, but of course, you know, because of the constraints of the space, it's mm -hmm. not, we can't circumambulate it, you know. But, um, um, you know, because the whole thing is, in, in, is what's important, you know, the whole three-dimensional mm -hmm. thing, and it's got to be a presence. And I wanted it to be a presence where <coughs> the physical effect of it made you want to sit with it, Mm. You know, and that's all to do with where the centre of gravity is in a, in a, in a, in a, in a thing. So if it's got a very low centre of gravity, you, you sort of almost transfer that to yourself and you feel sort of like weighted, mm. you know, like you want to sit down sort of thing. Mm. So if you try working out the proportions, the proportions of this, are, you know, if you stood up, it just wouldn't work at all, mm. you know. I added in, you know, there's all that thing of head lengths and all the rest mm. of it, like you say, you know, mm. it's a classical tradition. I added in an extra half so that the, 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 the torso is sort of extended, mm. but it gives more weight to what's, you know, sort of behind the hands. Because yeah. I think the centre of a root is like this sort of belly, yeah. the solar plexus area, yeah. you know, where some root is, it's, they're a bit chesty or... Mm. Or some rubies don't have a centre of gravity because they're not pieces of sculpture. Mm, mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, I was taught as a sculptor in the sort of, you know, modern Western tradition where things like that are important. Yeah. You know, but I mean, you know, a, a 14th century Tibetan wouldn't have had a thought about anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, completely irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't making sculpture, they were making sacred objects. Mm, mm. You know, well, that's a different thing. Yeah. And then, for me, you know, you can, we can think about the roof obviously as a sacred object, and it is, but it's also a sculpture room. And just as I feel that this whole room is a painting, but we'll, we'll come on to that oh, in a bit. But, um, you know, I just want to pursue this anti classic thing because it did really, like the hands, they're, they're, they're almost workman's hands, the, 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 the robes. When I first saw it, it was felt, felt like there were snakes as much as <laughs> they sort of. The, 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 the road, you know, how people, you know, the classic tradition, how you treat drapery. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. a whole history of drapery, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. How a piece of cloth falls yeah. is, is a yeah. history in itself, you know, from Leonardo to all, you know, all these people. But well, what you've got here is that. Uh, all those Greek ones. Yeah, that's like right. They're wearing clothes that are soaked in water, you know, yeah. they're so sort of clinging to the form. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, amazing. Yeah, you know, yeah. amazing bits of work. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's no point repeating it, I don't think. But what. You've done with these robes. I don't know. It's got this um, snake-like aliveness to it. It's almost like you're trying to have the aliveness of the figure um, through the, 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 the sort of through the, the work of the robe. Well, it's funny when I helped, you know, Chintani do the roofers at the LBC. You know, mm. when it was a building site, mm. and um, you know, I had a lot more experience with sculptures. So I sort of came in as his like. You know, technical assistant, it would be called, mm -hmm. and do casting and stuff. We did talk about the thing of like the robe around the Buddha, because those figures were made as naked figures to start off with. Mm -hmm. I and mean, I think he did actually drape material on them, you know, but soaked in plaster, yeah, soaked in plaster. something like that. Yeah. Um, we, we were speaking even then about the robes being the sort of energy emanating from the Buddha, almost mm -hmm. like, you know, when you get those. Um, Samantha Badger, you know, the Yam Yum figures yeah, yeah, of yeah. Samantha Badger in the sense of the Ardy Buddha, not the Bodhisattva. Yeah. You know, where he's got there's the dark blue figure and there's the white consort, mm. and it's, it's like she's sort of wrapped round him, mm. even though he's naked, he's not wearing a robe. But it's that thing of the emanation of the energy. Mm. So that was my main, I didn't really think about it that much. Mm. I mean, I just, you know, made. You know what I found to be nice shapes. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course. Well, you, you were thinking is but it? But I amazing? wasn't. But I wasn't looking at drapery. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I was putting things on the figure. You know, but I wanted it to be sort of, you know, in, well, energetic. Yes. And then the face. You know, but again, with the Buddha rupas that I've sort of imagined, that you you tend to have a, a very beatific face. You know, a very Sort of androgynous, very angel-like face, certainly not with large features. And one of the striking things is yeah. the features of the face in this, in your Rupa, I don't know, they, they, they kind of, 
They, they, they have that beatific sense and, 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 and beauty, but they're, 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 they're quite loud as well. You know, the, the, just the size of the features. For a, for a root, it seemed to me to be very big. It's like you, they're coming into the room with the force of the figure. I don't know if I'm sounding too funny. No, no. I mean, the thing is, once you've got an object there, or a painting, or whatever, it's like, you can never sum it up in words. Yeah. You know, if it's yeah. half decent, yeah, you can never sum it up in words. So yeah. different people will see, you know, different things, and none of them are wrong. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Because that's what you've put it there for. It's for people to sort of, in a sense, get stuff out of or project stuff onto, mm. you know, which makes them more aware of what's going on in themselves. You know, I mean, that's the whole thing of, you know, visualisation practice and mm. the rest of it. But, I, can, I mean, with faces, because faces are always what people concentrate on. Yeah, cool. yeah. And in the early days, I mean, it's hard to believe that, but people, you know, I've been painting away and people say, oh, doesn't look very enlightened. And I'm a bit, I thought, yeah, how did I know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So you just look at, you know, different sorts of, you want, you want it to be, you want it to have a sort of calming effect, like the thing of how you do the proportions. You want yeah. it to sort of make people want to sort of sit down and shut up. Mm. You know, that sort of thing. Because that's what the room's about, yeah. basically. Mm. But in terms of features, I discovered the way for me, anyway, to do in, in painting or sculpture or anything is not to do the features. You know, not to do it as a sort of a bit of the work. Anything, you know, yeah. Now I'm going to do the face. You know. Okay, yeah. so, I'd get in the groove of painting or making or whatever, and then every now and again I'd do a bit on the face. Right, you know, yeah, almost yeah, yeah, yeah. slightly off yeah, side, you yeah, know. Yeah. I remember being at the planetarium once when we were at school, you know, that thing next to Baker's Street. Well, yeah. I assume it's still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it would do. Where you see all the planets and, yeah. the, you know, projected. Um, and the bloke was saying the best way to see a star, you know, because he was naming them all is to look off to one side, not to look directly at it. Because your peripheral sort of vision is in a way more accurate than mm. you know, so you've got problems with your eyes obviously. But so in a way it sort of echoed that. It's like don't concentrate on the face, mm. you know, because it ends up just getting so problematic, you know, it looks like your mum or it looks like your, you know, it looks like you. I mean, it's, you know, according to Leonardo is the worst sin imaginable. You know, <laughs> things look like yourself. But um, so it's like doing it around the edges yeah, yeah. of something yeah. else, and so I never really thought about it. You know, I mean, I've thought about it far more since you gave that talk <laughs> than I did while I was doing it. Yeah, yeah, well, that's how it should be, isn't it? You just well, in a way, it's the making, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because it, it seems to me that you, you, it does have that sit down and shut up thing that you that you want, obviously, to call it your phrase, but. So easily, with this calm, is turned into a kind of quietism. It's turned into a kind of saccharine sweetness, and it's 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 got a sort of well, it's got a strength and a virility that belies that. That it's a a powerful calm that this figure represents. In fact, I, as I said, I I experienced it at first as somewhat shocking rather than reassuring. It's funny. The first roof I ever made. When I first come along to the movement, and it's because that's the way I sort of get to grips with things. I mean, it's all this stuff. Well, there wasn't a lot to read then, I must say. You know, there weren't lots of books on Buddhism. Mm. The only thing Bantis that was available was, the, was a survey. Um, the Three Jewels was out of print, even though it had been published. And all the order members of that said, Well, you don't want to read the survey. You know, or as a reference book, but for. So we well, must have written it for a reason, you know. So. <laughs> I, 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 you know, read through it, and I thought, well, I've got to make a Buddha. There's another bit to this story, which I might come back. Um, but a friend of mine who I'd been at art school with heard that I was, you know, I was trying to find out about Buddhism. He sent me a copy, an old. Old copy of the Light of Asia, you know, yeah, by Sir Edwin Arnold. It's a sort of free translation of one of the traditional sort of lives of the Buddha, but he turned it into sort of Victorian sort of poetry. Mm. 
And I was really sort of taken by it. It only really goes up to the Enlightenment. Mm -hmm. So it's mostly the Buddha as a young man and all this sort of, you know, being a young sort of, you know, privileged person and then, you know, the whole thing of the four sites and all the rest of it. So I thought, well, obviously what you do is you look at pictures of, you know, young men in North India. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I started mm -hmm. making this thing, which I've still got. Mm -hmm. I've given it away loads of times. It always keeps coming back, <laughs> <laughs> coming back to me. I mean, but it does look very young. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's about this, this big. I made it in clay and then cast it into plaster. And um, that, you know, that's where I started. From. Mm -hmm. Because I hadn't really seen many movies, you know, I've got vague memories of seeing them in museums, you know, and my, you know, various books on, that I've got on, you know, Chinese art and, you know, different areas of India and all the rest of it. But the thing is, what I was mentioning before, when I got the urge to make a Buddha, I thought Buddhas were the really fat ones, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that look really jolly and all the rest of it, because they're nice shapes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, these big roly-poly sort of shapes, I thought, yeah, I'll make a Buddha. Mm -hmm. So I started doing a bit of research because almost instantly you found out there wasn't really a Buddha. Mm -hmm. and a, a proper Buddha was these very, you know, not nearly so interesting <laughs> looking, <laughs> looking figures. And um, yeah, so it all, all sort of carried on from there. Because unless I can turn something into some kind of image, I can't sort of get to grips with it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's just the way you know, your mind works mm -hmm. if you do that sort of work. So I want to carry on from the roof of Flippers to this room. Um, I want to go to this, um, the um, back, uh, um, uh, <laughs> what was his name? Thank you. Um, <laughs> fairly common name. Um, I want to go to that Badger Sapper because that, with, uh, at one point, the, the big, I think, as far as I remember, that the, the Sharky Moon painting was here. Because yeah. I was looking for it, where did it come? The Van der was there. And they ended up with the Padma on the other That's side. That's right, and the yeah. Padma yeah. on the other side. That yeah. was the next iteration, as far as I remember. Yeah. And um, I was really struck that the uh, Van der Sapper was looking down to the side. And again, I thought, this is a new form. Um, the use of black in the painting, the use of the, the, the fact that the head was turned away and looking down slightly. Um, and then you did this with the wonderful Padmasambhava with, again, looking to the side with the demon and so on. Um, when, you, when, you, when we ended up with that, with the, with the Shakyamuni and the two of them, was that the genesis of this? And, and what, what did those two particular paintings mean to you? Well, you know, in a way, I mean, it was, it, I don't think it was particularly conscious, was it? I mean, you were part of all. Because uh, Padma Madra got me to do the Padma Samba right, for yeah. a winter retreat. That's right, yeah. that was in the centre of the room. Yeah, right. that's right. The Vajra Sattva I'd done for myself. Yes, that's right. I'd done a series, because when you do pictures for other people, you know, you have to end up with a picture, obviously. You know, there's no good saying, well, it was really interesting while it was going on, but, you know, I mucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> and we expect them to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought I've got to do something which is just where I can experiment, even to the point of ruining the picture. Yeah. So there's about ten pictures on that Badger Sapper. Yeah. Well, if you look at it up close, because it was originally done on canvas, well, it's still on canvas, obviously, but now it's stuck on board. Yeah. There are holes in the canvas where I've been working on it. I've actually gone through yeah. the canvas. Yeah. Um, but I did a sequence of 12 of them. The first few were half that size, but most of them are that size. They're sort of spread all over the movement then, because mm -hmm. shortly after that I got ill, so I couldn't do paintings for people. So they went off, you know, someone else said they wanted a I said, well, I've got these, but I can't do any painting at the moment. Mm -hmm. They just got dispersed. Mm -hmm. There's some, there's one, there's some here, isn't there? There's this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and there's the Byzantine cubist one. Yeah. 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 And, and the bubbly the, one, I took back. Yeah, you took the bubbly one. Didn't I? Because yeah, that one was here, wasn't it? I yeah. yeah. Where have you got that back in the yeah. studio? Yeah, okay. No, no, I haven't just got it in her room. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah there were 12 altogether. Yeah. But they were just so I could experiment beyond what I would do if I had to produce a piece of work for somebody else. Just mm. seeing where it would go, you know, what would happen. <coughs> 
all that sort of thing, which you have to do. You know, you can't work within those sort of constraints because you get, you get, but you can, get, you can get very lazy. Yeah. You know, when you just sort of end up. What do you, What do you mean by lazy? Well, repeating sort of formulas. I see, yeah. You know, where you find out what people like, and that's what you do. You know, whereas yeah. you want to be sort of. You know, you've got to question things. Why is this done like this? Why do you, you know? You know, the Japanese at such and such a time choose to do this particular figure in this way. You know, why did? I mean, the Tibetans are a funny. You know, it's a funny set of circumstances because, in a way, there isn't the Tibetan tradition. I mean, they're just, you know, the the, the, the you know, they're just attempting to preserve what was going on in North India. You know, as Buddhism was dying out. Mm. You know, and they drew up all these grid systems and everything. So the the, the tradition, as they saw it, didn't get lost, mm. and they just had to preserve it. And I mean, there's a, there's a, a, a you know, Buddhist historian, Tara Nasa, that even something like four centuries after Buddhism died out in India, said you could still recognise in Tibetan painting, the main schools of Indian no. painting, no. you know. So if you look at very early Tibetan stuff, because none of it's painted by Tibetans, it's painted by imported artists. Mm. So you see the paintings that would have been on the walls at Nalanda and things like that, but it's all been destroyed. Mm. I mean, more or less, the only stuff that survived is the little pictures in the palm leaf manuscripts. Mm. Um, you know, because anything larger got. Right. Yeah, well, they thought that it was a fortress. Mm. Mm. You know, so they destroyed it and butchered all the monks. Mm. You know. But, as uh, various people have pointed out, it, you can't blame it all on the Muslims because Buddhism is actually dying of old age. Mm. You know, it sort of lost its. You needed another yana sort of thing. Mm. You know, so you go Hinayana, in a manner of speaking, Mahayana, in a manner of speaking, Madriyana. You needed another yana, mm. and it, it didn't happen. Mm. Mm. Let, let's get back to the uh, Sattva for a minute. Um, I'd love to talk more about that tradition, but because you, it, again, you, you broke, for me, you broke a something that I thought was a Established that the full, the full front, you know, hieratic form, which is what I've always seen, and I thought just the movement of the head, and and the incredible atmosphere of that painting, which I've always loved that painting. Um, it, it seemed to be a breakaway, and was it by doing those twelve that got you to that breakaway, or in, in part? I mean, that that was sort of about midway through, I think, because there's another version of it which. Uh, Kane Madonna's got in Australia, I think, which has got much less colour on it. Mm. I mean, it's sort of more formalised, but the basic structure of it is very similar. Mm. Um, but if you look, if you, you know, if you look through all traditions of, of Buddhist iconography, you will find, you know, figures with the head turned. Right. They're yeah. not all full on. You know, yeah. just, if you search around enough, mm. you know, you find all sorts of stuff. But also at the time. I was looking at because I'd done a I'd done a rupa of Vajrasattva, which I started the moment I got ordained, and it went on for well, it's still going on. I've got a version of it at home now, which still isn't finished. But the, there's a version of it here which needs repairing, which used to be in Manchester. And I've been looking a lot at um, Donatello's David. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's sort of looking down. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 I mean, lovely, lovely mm. piece of work. I mean, so different to Michelangelo's mm. David, you know. Yeah. And I've always really loved that figure. And uh, so all those things, you know, they're all things because you're just trying to do what touches you. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, 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 it's like, you know, people talk about, you know, the imagination and things. And, you know, here, you know, there's always been, well, since the going to every retreats, you know, the mythic context and all that. And, you know, it's very sad because you get people coming to you and say, oh, you know, it's not, I don't feel very easy with all of that. And I've even had people say to me, I don't have an imagination. <laughs> so what do you think all this is? You know what I mean? I'm just, you know, going down the shop, something. It's all your imagination. You know. What have you got that's direct experience? Nada. 
Yeah. It's all going through, well, not just going through your mind, it's going through your defiled mind consciousness. Mm. You know, so you're like this little person down in the cellar with loads of CCTV cameras up on the surface, <laughs> you know, to find out what life is about. You know, and you've got speakers and you're hearing stuff, you know, and all the rest of it. You've got smell or something. <laughs> but they're all faulty. Mm. Mm. You know, so they're all feeding you wrong information. Mm. And you're making up a story as to what life's about, mm. because you've got no direct experience. Mm. You know, you pick this up. Is that a direct experience? You say, well, I'm touching it. Are you? <laughs> I had an expression to get with. <laughs> well, no, because, okay, you've got an experience, yeah. but it's going through these filters. So, you know, what was going on there that's now going on inside your imagination? How you're putting the world together, life together, what's going on in this room? Yeah. You have not got a clue. Well, none of us have, so don't feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But I find that sort of thing fascinating. The whole yeah. thing of perception. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's loads about this in Lama Govinda's first book, you know, mm. the stuff on the Abhidharma. He goes in to the whole thing of sequences in the process of perception. Mm. It's all about men sleeping under mango trees. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> But it's, you know, so, you know, what, 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 have you got? I mean, it is your imagination. To say you haven't got an imagination is laughable. Mm, yeah, you know, yeah. except it's very sad because yeah. people feel they're cut off from a whole area. But it's the thing, everybody has their own myth. Yeah. You know, which they built right from when they first were aware of their surroundings. Mm. It's the story you tell yourself that gives your life meaning. Mm. Well, everyone's had that before they even came across the dark. And, and that, for you, that for you in the whole of your life has been the creation of imaginative work, hasn't it? From sculptures to paintings to drawings to, to your Dharma life to your... My, my work is about trying to make sense of my experience. Mm. That's what it's, it's about. It's not about producing works of art. Mm. You know, they're just a sideline. You know, they're just a, an unfortunate byproduct. Mm. It takes <laughs> an awful lot of room and makes a mess. Mm. <laughs> But, I mean, that's why I thought when I discovered meditation, phew, I don't have to paint anymore. You know, this doesn't cost money, doesn't make a mess, and you don't need a studio. <laughs> so let's go back to these two paintings that I'm imagining here at the end of the past. What, what, tell me a bit about the, that's about a bit about the Padmasambha. Well, the Padmasambha was for Padmavajra. Well, Padmavajra was doing this winter retreat when he wanted a Padmasambha. And I mean, it's more or less a direct copy of the Tibetan wall painting. Oh, is it? Right, yeah. yeah. It's just I've, ch I've, I've tuned up the proportions a bit because I thought it was a bit squiffy. But was, I thought it was, <laughs> no, I thought I thought it was important for the movement to get people away from thinking, you know, like you've got up here, that's Padmasambhava. Yeah. Because some people, when they saw the Padmasambhava here, well, that can't be Padmasambhava because <laughs> you're not seeing the right way. <laughs> I've had all the members tell me that. Yeah. You know, it can't possibly be Padmasambhava. You know what I mean? But it's, it's much more fluid than that. The tradition is much more fluid than that. It's like mm. the figures aren't all in sort of iron boxes. Yeah. They all sort of bleed into each other. Well, not very good image, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not fixed like that. It's all to do with practice and your focus and the angle that you're coming at things. You know, And it's all ways of relating to in a sense, you know, the image less, yeah. you know, because we can't get there directly, if we were confronted with Trinitar straight off, I mean, you know, we just panic, mm. you know. So, you know, you have to articulate that space, and that's what the Bodhisattvas are, and the Buddhas, you know, after the Buddhas. And, it, you know, one of the things you've done for us as a Sangha, <coughs> I think, is to help us have a more fluid imagination about these images. Well, even just to think about it. Yeah. You know, if you don't like the way I paint, well, think about it. Why not do your own painting? Mm. You know, show me something that you do like. Yeah. You know, ask me to paint differently. I mean, I'll paint whoever you want, you know. I paint like this. People say, why do you paint like this? Because I don't want the paintings to take forever. Right, right. You know what I mean? What, was that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, you know, it's, 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 it's like, you know, you could spend years on some of these paintings. Yeah. 
you know, there's Google, all the sort of jewelry like this, and da, 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 but you know, you've got to be, especially if you're doing things for people's sagas, you know, they want it before they drop dead. <laughs> <laughs> that would be handy, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's hardly pragmatic. So it's like, well, okay, this is, you know, British iconography is quite a complex thing, mm. you know. Um, so how do you deal with that? Because in order for, to, 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 to help people's visualisation, you've got to produce an image that is memorable. Mm. So it mustn't just be covered in sort of, you know, psychedelic spaghetti. It's got to be sort of easy to take in. Mm. But at the same time, all the information has to be there. Mm. So the jewellery put on the Bodhisattvas needs to be there because it's got particular sort of, you know, symbolism and, and all the rest of it. But you don't want it to sort of clutter the image. Mm. You know, so you have to produce a, a, an image which, you know, has the information in it, but also it has a, quite a simple impact, yeah. you know. Yeah. And you can remember, because if you're trying to visualise, that's what you do. You start off, if you've got a picture that you like, you just remember it. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. then as you're practising, you slowly breathe life into that, into that image. And then it can go, well, wherever it needs to go. Mm. You know, it's not, it's not difficult. And we, we all do it already. Mm, mm. It's just we don't give ourselves credit for it. Mm, cool. So from that image, yeah, from that time where there was the shop community and the Roger Sapphire and Pamela Sandra, how did we start to grow into this? Because one of the things I've been feeling, I mean, I, I, everyone I know will have felt this coming into this room. I mean, every time I come in, it's like this, this room is a living, it's, it's living. It feels like a painting. Like literally, almost like you take the painting down and doing it again, making it bigger, you know, which is like what you do in a painting. Yeah, you, yeah. A figure in a, it, it's, it's scraped off and, yeah. and made bigger, another strip figure is scraped back. This whole room to me, because what I keep thinking is, well, what, what is the plan here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, 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 it's not obvious what the plan <laughs> Well, there was one. No, I haven't seen it. How is that possible? What's the purpose of one? Yeah. You know, because like you say, there were the beginnings of things. There were a few images here. Yeah. The Vajra Sattva I gave to Padma because Vajra, Padma Vajra kept going on about how much he liked it. And I thought, well, Ron had just been rolled up in my work room. It's mm. best that it gets used. Yeah. You know. The Padma Sattva was done to a specific request, wasn't it? As was the Buddha, the Shakyamuni, the big, you know, yeah. the other shiny. I don't know what the discussion was here, but then one day Samudra Dhaka, who was the chairman, turned up where I was living, well, where I'm still living, and said, We want to fill the whole room with, with, with images. I want you to do two a year until it's filled up. And he said, I want the first two to be opposite the shrine. Mm. Oh, yeah. And the moment he said that, I saw green and white Tara. Oh. More or less like they uh, are. And so I said, well, this is what's happened. And they said, fine, go ahead. I mean, you know, you've got to say, on the part of the Pavanoga community, and communities, as it's gone through time, because I've been through about five chairmen, I think, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, including, you know, it was very courageous. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know that you can do it now. Because one of the striking things about it is that, apart from the, the, the small panels of the, of the rivers, which we'll come on to in a minute, but... It's all by you. Yeah. You know, I think now we'd be saying, oh, we, we can't be doing that. You said it back then. Did they? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got to put something in. You know, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But the thing is, this came out, if I hadn't worked here for 11 years on the going to ethnic retreats, I don't think this would have happened, would it? Mm. No, because we, we talked about it so much. Like, you know, what can you do with shrine rooms? You know, it's like, when we started this, people said, well, well, I don't like showing them it's full of paintings. Yeah. Well, when were you last in one? <laughs> <laughs> it's an idea. Yeah, yeah. You know, unless we do it, we don't know. Yeah. You know. And this room will be very different when the last little bit goes in. You know, yeah. It's like you know, the cosmic portal will open up and you know, <laughs> <laughs> all the transporters. In a manner of speaking. Yeah. But I mean, it is. It's, it's like when there's no wall showing at all and everything is just one panelled room. 
Except, I don't know, if you keep saying more about the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. It's not a painting. It's to get away from the thing of paintings hanging on the wall. Yeah. And you look at it like an art gallery. When they were doing the lighting, I said, remember, it's a shrine room, not an art gallery. Yeah. You know, we don't want spotlights and all the paintings and a little guidebook, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You look at the Tibetan shrine rooms that are literally lined with things. All they've got is butter lamps. Yeah. You know, there's no windows. Right. You know, so you're just in a room that you've generated an atmosphere for you to practice in. Mm. It's not about the, the, the paintings, it's, it's generating a conducive atmosphere. Now, it won't work for everyone. Mm. You know, so if you've got another idea, do it. Mm. You know, and then we, you know, because we're at the beginning. I mean, our position in terms of history, you know, Buddhist history especially, in terms of Buddhism in the modern world, Buddhism in the West, whatever you want to call it, yeah. it's the modern world, really. Yeah. Bhante's sort of take on things is like, what can we take from this enormous tradition, with loads of contradictions in it and all the rest of it? We are here to make all the most obvious mistakes. Mm. That is inevitably our function. Mm. Whoever comes along in 100 years' time, 200 years, if we're still here, you know, if the planet still exists, who knows? can go, oh, well, that was a good idea, not so sure about that, mm. that's definitely not. Mm. It's, it's, we're just putting in the manure, you know, but unless we do it, you can't have people sitting around the table talking about it, you know, that's, that, we're not going to go anywhere. Mm. But I want to keep going on about this fact that there's no programme here, because um, yeah, no. I was saying to a friend earlier on the retreat that I thought you were, you know, the tree ratners, um, uh, oh gosh, my name's keep going. Um, what's his name? Never mind. I forget that. Um, Sing me. <laughs> um, you, who, who was the main painter in Venice? Um, can anyone remember? In Venice? Yeah. Anyway, the one who painted it. Anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to me. But, but you normally, want, sorry, but my brain. Who? Tintoretto. There we go. Good. I thought the entry to Tintoretto. Similar. <laughs> <laughs> Got that one in. <laughs> you know, but you know, Tintoretto, for instance, he got the, um, the school of dance San Rocco in, in Venice, and he you know, filled the place with images. But you know, there's a clear um, program. What you, what you, this room feels like to me is that it's, it's incredible meeting between something almost medieval and cave-like, like it's grown, like you know how you medieval chapels, it's like. Someone's put a chapel there, someone's yeah. stuck something over there, someone's knocked half of that off and stuck yeah. something else yeah. there, someone's done a bit of an extension yeah. over here. Yeah. You've got that feeling in here, which I think changes when you see the room in different light. You know, when the lights are when you come in in the morning, the lights are different, and yeah. all through the day, you've got that meeting this kind of modern painting. You've never tried to be, it seems to me, anything but a modern painter. You're not trying to... It's all paint. So I wonder, you know, can you say something, I'm burbling now, but can you say something about the non-program nature? You know, because I remember the two Torahs appearing, and again, a bit of a shock. Yeah. They're not the Torahs you expect. They're, they're ex again, it's got this energy to them. They're not sweet at all. Well, they're, they're taken from very early wall paintings, you know, in Ladakh, mm. as it happened. So, you know, now seen as part of the Tibetan tradition. But probably painted, there was a team of painters, they seem to think, mm. that were going around that area. And they'd paint whatever you wanted. If you wanted your harem painting, they'd paint that. If you mm. wanted your shrine painting, they'd paint that. Mm. They weren't even necessarily Buddhists, apparently, which I found baffling given the complexity of the mm. iconography and everything. Mm. But I mean, some of them were Kashmiri. They reckon some, was, I think one in particular actually came from Persia. Mm. And with things like this, you can see in terms of the drapery and mm. everything and the patterns. And the headdress. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like in these wall paintings. I mean, you know, some of the decorations around the edges, it's like they're, they're, they're Persian hunting scenes. You know, men on horses hunting lions with bows and arrows. Mm. It's not very Buddhist, is it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. But, um, so how did it grow from that? You know, you've got... Well, and this is not a program. Well, the way it started off, like you say, there was a bagger which I'd given them. Um, which ended up in here. It wasn't in here to start off with, was it? It was in the lounge or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then there was the Padmasambhava, which I did do turning. I mean, I had seen this other wall painting, which I, I wanted to do a version of, but 
you know, they've made it turn the other way to that deceptive so that they've got turning towards the Shakti movie. Mm. Um, but then that, that had not been a plan. Mm. So when Samudradaka came to me, I thought, well, why don't we just continue like that? And mm. we'll see, if we put these two tiles in, what effect does that have on the room? Mm. Right. And my insistence was that it's not my project. You know, this is not, some people said, oh, it's art, like it's art gallery. No, it's not. I, I paint pictures myself. They're nothing like this. Well, you've seen them. Mm-hmm. They're nothing like this. No, that's right. You know, if I was on a desert island, you know, with me paints. Yeah, I wouldn't be painting Buddhists and Bodhisattvas. I'd mm-hmm. paint them because there's a community that needs them whether they know it or not. <laughs> and without that community, there'd be no point in doing these images. Mm. You know, it'd just be a personal idiosyncrasy. I mean, it's like, you know. Wasn't there, a, a, was there any pressure to create a plan? Because, you know, I, no, I think... Not, well, not that I was aware of. Uh, okay. <laughs> like, was there? We'd come out, wouldn't you? We'd have, we'd have our... Yeah, we'd come out and chat. Right. You know, we missed it once I was ill. I couldn't. Yeah. I mean, that's, all this has happened because I got ill and I couldn't do the retreats no more. Right, yeah. Otherwise, I'd still be doing study retreats. Yeah, we'd talk, you'd suggest something, a couple yeah. of community members, yeah. Yeah. you know, what... It, it, it was fantastic, you know, the, the I mean, images in like the Amitabha. Yeah. I mean, that was a, came basically, I think, from something Sadaloka said. You know, because that was the that was the west, west facing wall. Yeah. You know, yeah. and he, he wanted Amitabha over there. So, you know, yeah. and it was sort of things like that. You know, I mean, all this round the entrance is so dark. I mean, that was. Names again, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the boy? Biddy Vachin? Yeah, that's it. That's it. He was looking at the Taras ones. Because the Taras originally had gold backgrounds. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it didn't yeah. work. Right, right, yeah. It didn't work because there wasn't enough gold for it to balance with the colours. Oh, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the painting needed to be bigger so that the gold could, could, could stand a chance against you know, the complexity of the colours. So I painted it black because Tara, you know, star, and you know, white Tara is associated with the full moon, so it's all mm. night time, mm. you know. Mm. So he said it would be nice if the night continued. Mm. Well, you know, a lot of people say no more black, please. You know, <laughs> it's a, you know, in our culture, people have got very mm. negative connotations of that. Funny, Native North Americans, black is the colour of life. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's different yeah, cultures yeah. have different associations. So the moment he said, I thought, oh yeah, wow, that'd be great, you know. And these angels up here, I'd actually seen in Norwich mm. on, on, on stained glass windows. That's it. Right, yeah. I mean, not exactly like this, yeah, because yeah. the ones in the stained glass window, the top wing goes straight up. Mm. Obviously, I couldn't fit them in there without the angels being really tiny, so I had to change that. Mm. And we'd got the Pavasana in the middle by that time, because mm. I saw the white tara and green tara, tara as... The, 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 the origins of uh, Mandarava and Yashay Sogyo. Because okay. this is Pamaloka. Okay, yeah. yeah. Pamasamba is really important. So they're his two chief disciples. So, you know, Yashay Sogyo is supposed to be the emanation of White Tower and vice versa. You know, so that's why Pamasamba is in the middle. Mm. You know. mm. But then when I saw these, and they were angels holding the sun and the moon. I mean, I didn't put that in. Right. That's, that's yeah. what they were like. So I thought, okay, if we extend the night, we can, we can, we can, we can do them. See, so, I, I think that one of the things that's so striking about this room is that it, it feels like it's grown as, an, it, it, as a as a vision. It's not. I, I think it, one of its strengths is the fact that it wasn't pre-planned. Um, yeah. You know that that somehow it, it, it's got. Much more humanity to yeah, you yeah. over stress. Well, work. in a sense, that's what the spiritual life is like, isn't mm. it? Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, there was a thing I said which someone put in, 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 in the shampoo and said, quote, and I said, oh, God, that's bloody good. You know, so, <laughs> no, no, so, really. <laughs> <laughs> Where it said, you know, when I first came along, I had a whole jumble of ideas about what I was taking on. None of them have turned out to be any use. Mm. But their gradual abandonment has left a path of debris which has convinced me that I've moved from where I originally started. <laughs> so that's, that's it. Mm. You know, whatever you think you're getting involved in, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is going to be, you know. 
But I mean, you know, none of us would get old only if we really knew what we were taking on. <laughs> you know, just get a little daylight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, want, I, I want to come back. Yeah, that, so uh, we might come back to this sort of. You want to get away from and see living daylights. I want to come back to this idea of paint in this room, because one of the things that you insist on is, I think, is this modern thing of paint of paint. Is that none of these are windows into imaginary uh, mythic they're not, world. They're not photos of no. Visions. They're not kind of. They're, they're, in that sense, they're, they're almost anti that. They're insisting on their, their paint on a flat surface. They, they speak of, to me anyway, of, you know, the colours are like how Picasso used colour. He just put on a colour. He wasn't a colourist in a certain sense. He's not trying to get it all to. Well, he's a draftsman, basically. He's a draftsman, yeah. yeah. I mean, I want to come back to drawing as well, because I think drawing is absolutely central to the... Um, one of the reasons I think they endure is because of the drawing. But um, what about this kind of... Because what's amazing to me is this meeting of something like primitive art or medieval art or <coughs> art that's a fo almost a folk art with... You know, Picasso's draftsmanship and uh, colour is colour, paint is paint, um, truth to materials, all that stuff. How did you get to that? Because if have, had you not painted it like this, I wouldn't have thought that was possible. And I think, no, no, what we need to do is faux Renaissance painting. Well, you know, you know I'm not that keen. I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that I'm not keen on the Renaissance. I'm not keen on the effects of the Renaissance. Mm. You know, I mean, the reason for that is, is the Renaissance is where you get geometric sort of one-point perspective coming in, as, as passing itself off as reality, you know, and that primarily so that architects could draw buildings of what they're going to look like before they built them, whereas before you had to wait until it was finished and say, there you are, that's what it's <laughs> And if it fell down, they build it again. You know, I mean, a number of cathedrals and things that fell down, and you know, people don't take that into account now. It's like, oh, well, how are we going to make it stay up next time? <laughs> you know, that's the way things have, you know, so you've got this whole thing of one-point perspective, which when I first came across perspective theory at my art school, and I ended up having to do my perspective course twice because the course is changed and we were too young to move on, so we had to do the last year twice. Now, I thought if I understood you know, mathematical perspective theory, that would be the key to reality. Yeah, well, that's the tradition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Took me a long time, it's a bit slow, but I mean, um, of course, I realised it's only a theory. Mm. And it's only a theory because it's based on uh, the idea of light rays being straight, and they're not, they're curved. Mm -hmm. So to be able to do anything mathematically accurate, you'd have to know the exact measurement between the object and the sun and work out the curve. You know, that's why <coughs> proper perspective drawings always look a bit too sharp, mm -hmm. you know, a bit, a bit too acute mm -hmm. to reality. Mm -hmm. you know. I said, I said the other day, reality is much softer. Right, right, yeah. You know. yeah. And it's true. And once I tweet that, I mean, I was so disappointed. You know, that's not the key to, you know, understanding the universe or anything. Mm. And so what you have to look at is what were they doing before then? Mm. It's not that the Byzantine painters or the medieval painters didn't know about perspective. You know, they weren't stupid. <laughs> I mean, actually, they had four different types of perspective. It's just they didn't turn it into a mathematical theory because mm. they were painting heaven. That's why you've got gold backgrounds and all the rest of it. It's not like, you know, the Annunciation set in a Tuscan landscape. And that was a change in spiritual practice, mm -hmm. apparently. Mm -hmm. You know, this is only stuff I've read, but... You know, where suddenly your daily devotions, you were encouraged to sort of visualise them as taking place in an environment you recognised. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, stages of the cross or the life of Christ or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's all going on in some way you recognise. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that historically it wasn't in Italy, I mean, it's nothing to do with it, you know. Um, so, but if you go back to the Byzantine painters, they're painting heaven. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to sort of, in a way, disjoint you. You know, make you think, oh, hang on, what's going on here? So sometimes you get things, okay, sure, they get smaller as they go away, but some things get bigger as yeah. they go away. Yeah. 
you know, and I mean, there's all sorts of things, but it's just trying to sort of show you you're not where you're used to being. Mm. You know, so it's a completely different sort of um, approach. But you, and you've you've done that very much on the underneath. I've just recently seen the Minaret. The oh right, yeah, the, the, yeah. The world underneath, yeah. Method, which I don't see this time. Oh okay, long. yeah. And it seems yeah. to have multiple perspectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, loads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but that's that's the thing because. But the thing is, this is this is the, my problem with the Renaissance. Um, people sort of took that on board, and nobody's questioned it since, apart from the Cubists. Hmm. You know, and everyone went, "Oh, Cubism, interesting." <laughs> <laughs> but they were looking back at Byzantine painting, right, amongst yeah. other things. Yeah, yeah. You know, like African all this sort of stuff, but different traditions, mm. different conventions, because it's all conventions. Mm. To do a picture, you have to adopt a convention. Yeah, like you do in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that's the way you make sense of it. To think you can reproduce what's in front of you, what's going into your eyes, on a flat surface, is laughable. Mm. You know, but people now accept that what was set up in the Renaissance, because the logical conclusion of it was the photo. Yeah. You know, because that's where things like the camera obscura started coming in, mm. you know, projected images, you know, actually seeing something out there projected in. But like David Hockney says, the view you get of the world is of a one-eyed man seeing everything through a window and never moving. <laughs> you know, well, is that our experience? No, it's not. <laughs> You know, it's nothing near our experience. Mm. But we think it is. We think photos represent our reality because that's our conditioning. Mm. All it is is our conditioning. Mm. You know, I mean, if you read anthropologists who've managed to find cultures that do not have that conditioning, you show them a photo, they go, oh, very nice. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's got no information in it. <laughs> there was one guy I was reading, because my missus, Pam Dirty, she's really keen to sort of, anthropological books it's for and all this. This guy he thought, oh well I'll give the chief a treat sort of thing. I said total of it's all his family. He turned them all into earrings. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't his family, it was just coloured bits of material. Yeah. I remember uh, reading really something where someone who'd never seen a photograph was showing a photograph of his parents and he just said, No, no, that's not them. And then later said, Oh about that, like a year later he said, Yeah, I can see a very slight resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> Even back in the First World War, people went off to war, they wanted a picture of their sweetheart, they just got given a picture of a lady. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming their sweetheart was a lady. <laughs> <laughs> and let, let's talk about, the other thing is drawing. One of the things that is, is perhaps people might not grow up is, is how strict the drawing is. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to... You know, the, the, uh, we, I, I love the gold. I, I really, lo I, I really love this fact that it's grown. I, I think this idea, for instance, of the Buddha tiles. I thought, what a bad idea is that? Um, but then, I know it's shocking. But when I when I come into the room, I just, it just works wonderfully. I don't know how you thought of that, but anyway. But what what is draw? How have you? What is drawing to? Because they feel like you've got that graphic sense absolutely central to the work, really. Well, that's the Partly me. Um, drawing is everything. That's the way I was trained. Mm. You, know, you know, if you can't draw, go home. Mm. Mm. Um, but it's to do, you see, I think it's to do with clarity of vision. Because William Blake says, you know, in a vision, you know, if you've got a sort of, uh, you know, a, 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 a more inclusive, higher, you know, view of you know, your reality, things are, are, are much clearer, much crisper than your normal experience. Mm. You know, they're more vivid, mm. you know. Mm. And I think, you know, the way I see it, it's like things are only memorable if they make sense. You know, they've got to make sense. Mm. Like, it's like someone turned a whole load of my drawings into a colouring book. Mm. And I had mm. to point out to them, these drawings are not lacking colour. Mm. These are black and white drawings. That's what they were done for. Mm. You know, they don't need colour to complete them. But they are totally logical. Mm. So they can be coloured in. Right, yeah, you know, yeah. because this bit of material that goes behind this arm will come out the other side 
in the place where it should come mm-hmm. out. You know, it's not like two inches up or two inches down or whatever. So they're completely logical. So you can colour them in mm-hmm. should you want to. Mm-hmm. You know, a good thing to do actually, if you want to help your visualisation or the rest of it, find a picture you like and colour it in. It will do wonders for you, mm-hmm. you know, and if it doesn't work first time, do it again. Mm-hmm. You know, but it is as simple as that. Mm-hmm. So to me, unless the drawing works, see drawing is directly related to sculpture. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not I think painting in a sense is off somewhere or sometimes you see some painters. Well I used to think, you know, Bonnard worked as a painter because he couldn't draw very well. Until I saw his drawings mm-hmm. and then I understood his paintings, whereas before I just thought you know, none of his people have got bones in it. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, here's a whole thing of like it's got to, it's got to have that sort of impact of, of, you know, making sense. Now, all these figures, you know, when we're visualising them, they're not solid. You know, they're made of light. You know, now you don't want to start getting into trying to sort of reproduce that literally, because you end up with those stuff that looks like posters for science fiction films, you know what I mean? Or, you know, the worst possible stuff that got produced is psychedelic art, you know, and all that. Of, and it's just ghastly, you know. Um, so you, you produce stuff. It's like I said the other day. Well, I've said it loads of times, but... The, these, these pictures, they're not pictures of the destination. They're, they're how you get there. So they're maps. They're not photos of where you're going, because that's what you need. If you're going somewhere, you need a map. So it gives you all the information, but it's not what it will look like. You know, it's funny, Fancy said an interesting thing once, well, not to me. He said it to Kamala Sheila, who told me about it. And he said, he liked the way I painted, which was news to me. <laughs> um, because it forced people to use their imagination. Because this obviously wasn't, you know, Manjigosha, as he appears in the San Bogokaya or whatever, you know. This is all the information you need, you know, to get there sort of thing. Mm. You know, because, uh, I mean, I said again the other day, if you want to go to Cornwall on your holidays, there's no one giving you, someone giving you a photo of Cornwall. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? You need a map. <laughs> And that's what these paintings are, you know, so it's, it's not, I'm not painting fairy then. So, say a bit more about that, so it's, it's, you want them to sort of convey the they're information to practice, you're on. They're to practice with, mm. you know, this is what you're taking, but you bring them to life. I that's see, yeah, your yeah. job. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's no good, you know, just looking at pictures of people like that. It's like, well, do the work. Mm. 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 You know, and it will change. I mean, the good thing about having a room like this, I mean, whoever paints it doesn't, you know, you don't have to like my painting, it doesn't have to be me. But it's like you get a chance to build a relationship mm. with the images and see them again and again. And people have told me, you know, the first time such and such a picture went in, they were horrified, you know, they really mm. hated it. You know, but then after, you know, a couple of years of coming on the retreat, they saw it quite differently. Well, that's an important experience, mm. you know, which you don't get going around an art gallery, mm. you know, where you, I mean, these days they're tiny going in, mm. tiny going out, and you go around with your little book which tells you what you're meant to be seeing. Mm. You know what I mean? You've got to build a relationship with it, so here you get a chance to do that. Mm. Mm. Now, uh, we, we're going to start drawing this because there's so much more I want to talk to you about. But this, but we could be here for months. We could. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where, where do I want to look? A few things I want to try and draw together at the end here. You know, going back, you know, like, why this selection of images? You've got the five Buddhas, so that, you know, you expect that. I, I for instance, might have expected to see, there's only one Manjagosha, I think. Um, why one Manjagosha and, I don't know, is there four Taras? Four um, you know, um, I might have expected to see a thousand on Avalokiteshvara as an image for the order. Um, I might have expected a painting of Banker, I don't know what. Why the, did it grow? Did it, what, where, where, where do we get to the magic? I love that magic, where do we get to that? Um, where, you might, where might you be going from here, if you can tell us? 
Well, no, I'm doing a new Vajrapani. Yeah, there's a space down there. Because the one that was in before. See, now he's gone. He's in the front library. Yeah. He looks fine. Yeah, he yeah. just didn't work in this space. Why not? Yeah. Well, there's a number of things. One, I've not been asked to paint many Vajraponis. And I've paid what I'm asked to paint. Yeah, yeah, that's why these figures are in, what the guys in the panel ever wanted. Mm -hmm. Not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know what I mean. It's, yeah. it's got to come out of the room being used for practice. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I wouldn't have thought of, of, of putting Fudo or Archer in. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because, I mean, he's an important figure to Benjamin. Benjamin was like very enthusiastic about his own picture of him. No, but it's it. only about, what, three, four? Yeah. Yeah. And it's from the Japanese tradition. Yeah. You know, where some people say, Oh, you're just reproducing Tibetan stuff. Well no, yeah. Shitigaba's not Tibetan. No, no. Well, in that form he's not Tibetan. No, yeah. You know, he'd look he'd look, you know, virtually the same as, as, as peaceful mm. Vajrapani, mm. if it was. It's, it's, you know, you've got to look across the traditions like our refuge tree does. Mm. You know, it's the first non-sectarian refuge tree in the history of Buddhism. Yeah, yeah. yeah very good. important. Yeah, yeah. yeah, very important. And you know, so they would come up with things, and we talk about it. And, uh, you know, I mean, originally there wasn't going to be a Varocha because I thought, well, obviously the central Buddha stands for Varocha, but when you get people who you know, they buy photos of the pictures, they want a full set of the five bullets. Yeah. So where is he going to go? You can't just put him off to the side. Yeah, cool. You know, because it's the central, or within a lot of the traditions, the central Buddha, mm. not all. Mm. Um, so that's when we came up with the idea of putting him on the ceiling, which I think works really well. Yeah. I made him round. So that people didn't immediately think there were going to be lots of other pictures butting up against. <laughs> 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 and what, what about the whose idea was the tiles? I knew it's a bad idea with the tiles, but they do work. You well, know. no, it just came into my head one evening. I was working away, and obviously, you know, looked at so much iconography in different traditions, and you know. And, oh yeah, Aro Kano was doing his pilgrimage in Japan, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was sending me photos of Japanese shrines. And there were these Japanese shrines. I don't think this was before I came up with the idea, but and people contributed images mm. which got put up in the temples. Mm. It was sort of like tiles, and they were slightly bigger than this. Mm. And because I've been thinking, well, you know, okay, we're not going to have. You know, you have, need to have the main figures. Yeah. You know, they've got to follow the sadhus. All the figures follow the sadhus, yeah, yeah, yeah. more or less, because you know that's that's the point. You know, that's what we practice. And um, you know, I've been thinking about you know how do we sort of work it so that it all works as one yeah. thing. And then suddenly this thing popped into my head. I was horrified. You know, the idea of collective art where everyone takes on the project is the absolute opposite of anything I would ever think of. <laughs> <laughs> well, but here it seemed obvious, yeah, yeah. in a sense. Yeah. You know, because it's, 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 it's... One, I've been going on so much to people, what a big effect it has if you just colour in. Mm. You know, if you think you can't paint, you can't draw, or whatever. All these things that people say, you know, the idea that people can't draw is so sad. You know, I mean, everyone can draw. What they usually mean is they can't draw in the way that they think they're supposed <coughs> to draw. Mm. You know, I mean, if you can pick up a pencil and sign your name, you can draw. Mm. You know, or just make a mark, you can draw. You know, maybe not what you want to do, but that's just what you're putting the time in. Yeah, yeah. You know. And I'd come across this, the first ever where they'd found repeated images of the Buddha. You get it Japanese. Uh, yeah. They were inside a rupa. Uh, and yeah. that's what this drawing is based on. Uh, is the, the, the I mean they were printed, so the you know the registration was, you know, pretty random, you know, because they just gone boom 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 like yeah. this. It wasn't all neat and tidy. Yeah. And I thought, why don't they do that and, and get people to colour them in? Yeah. And it works so well. It did, it had to do it. Well, again, I mean, the guy here sorry. is like saying, 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 saying this thing. He said, yeah, we'll do that. And we thought, wow, you know, we just don't trust that it's going to work, sort of thing. 
And when we first had a decent number of them, we could put them together. And we put them up around um, the, the peaceful way to find them. But no, it actually is going to work. Yeah, yeah. You know, it can really work. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? One of the strikes, when you think about it, actually is to do with the relationship between the patron and the artist again. Very old matter. That relationship is crucial, I think, to a to major work. Yeah, no patrons, no art. Yeah, yeah. And there needs to be this kind of understanding between them that the patrons will trust, give money and trust the artist. The artist will, will uh, as it were, credit the patron or be respectful to their needs. In, in that sense, you're a very, as it were, old-fashioned artist. Also a very lucky one. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. I mean, these guys, I mean, you know, they've taken a risk. You know, I mean, I mean, I said originally, I mean, I thought to myself, you know, having been around the room for a fair amount of time, I thought, is this going to last more than two years? Mm. You know, people get all excited about different projects, all this, yeah, yeah. and then something else comes along. Yeah, and, so, you know, actually, it's gone, it's gone, it's got stronger and stronger. Yeah, yeah. As more of the plan has appeared, well, non plan has mm. appeared, in a way, the enthusiasm has grown. Mm. You know, and it's like each chairman has brought completely different sort of qualities to it, all of things, and made me think in ways that I wouldn't have on my own. And that's, in a way, that's the point. Mm. This is the product of a community. Okay, mm. I'm wiggling a paintbrush around. Mm. Fair enough, you know, someone's got to do it. But, you know, it's, it's without the community, there'd be no need for this. Mm. Mm. Like I say, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't fill my eyes and stuff like this, you know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you know what I mean, it's like, that's not... I mean, all my own paintings come out of my practice. Mm. I mean, Darwin, bless his heart, said to me, I'd much rather the Shrine of the Swilly Orr paintings. And I said, well, you might like it, Darwin, because it drives most people mad. <laughs> you know, because it's so, rarely, so personal to me, so yeah, subjective. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, it works for me. You know, up to a point. It's me finding things out. It's not me saying this is the way it is. It's me finding things out. But you've got to have a common language that everyone understands, mm -hmm. regardless of whether or not they like the way it's painted. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh yes, no, I know that this is about the sound of it. You know, I know that this is French kosher. You know. And do you know? You know, you, you, you're you're working on you on the Rothbard um, uh, Park. Yes. Uh, do you know? Where, do you have any sense of where you're going from there? Is, is there a going from there? Well, I mean, that's the last big space, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. it? So yeah. then it's a question of all the awkward little corners, and there are many awkward yeah. little corners. There are, aren't there? You know, that we've got to, we can see things like along the top of the Akshobia and, and down the bottom of this, where you have to sort of come up with where you're filling a space, and you don't want to just get a Buddha tile and saw it in half. No. <laughs> you know, you're not yeah. someone's put all that effort into it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or even do your own ones. I mean, there is one that I really like that hasn't got a Buddha in it that goes around that, uh, that wood, wood bracket above Panya Pan Return. Oh, yeah. You see, yeah. there's no Buddha. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because there's a lump we're sitting out of the painting. Of course, yeah. I think that was done by a Karshika. Was uh, it Karshika here? Yeah. You did it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we haven't chopped the Buddha's head off. You don't, don't you also change mine? We did the the middle, you know, the middle rep, the ground, the, the base of the middle rep. I, that wasn't there before. No. What was there before? I can't remember. Nothing. 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 Okay. Did, mm. did you know that that was going to be there, no. or did it just grow? Yeah. No. No. It's like you see underneath that showbia. Um, previously, the painting I did, and it had to go down to the ground mm. because there was a fire door there. Oh yeah. So you didn't yeah. want to paint it with like half a door. And no, no. So I did another panel, which was the leaves of the lotus that he's sitting on. Mm. I was never entirely happy with it. But then I did the leaves underneath the bodhisattvas, and I mm. thought, well, if they're connected to the ground, which makes sense, you know, the yeah, bodhisattvas yeah. being the active reflex of the Buddhas, then Akshobhya shouldn't have leaves underneath it. So mm. then I redid the panel underneath mm. to, to mirror the, the Amitabha. I see, yeah. You see, because they're not connected to the ground, because they're, you know, um, their function is different. Mm. You know. mm. you know, so there is a sort of there's a sort of logic behind it. So when they came up with the idea of on either side of, of, of Amitabha there's Kshitigarbha and the two armed Dabla Kitesha. Mm. What I first saw when we were talking about that was them the other way around. Huh. But when I did some research I discovered that this, this triad is really important in Korean Buddhism. Huh. But this way round. 
So I thought, well, stick with you know, the traditional, a tradition. Yeah. Sort of thing. Don't just make something up. Yeah. So I never make things up. There's always some kind of precedent for it. Because that's what we're doing. We're trying to survey the whole tradition. So what works for us? It's mm. a big question mark. Mm. You know. And like I say, people can look back on the pattern of the and say, does this work? You know, it works for some people, it won't work for others. I mean, you know, a lot of people, it's had a massive effect on them. Yeah. Yeah. And does it work for you? I mean, how do you feel? You know, here we are sitting... Well, here. I've had very little experience of the room being used. Mm. You know, I mean, all this has come out of me being years and in the shrine, but I, I can't do retreats mm. anymore, so it's the occasional day. I think, well, recently we had this open day mm. when even the ladies were here, and the ladies had done the majority of the Buddha titles, <coughs> you know, because they took to it immediately, you know, because the blokes are more Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought would happen. Yeah. I thought it would happen. I suppose what I'm wondering, just finish up, uh, uh, do you, do you, are you satisfied with that? Is that the right language? Are you? I'm blown away. Oh, yeah. Sure. I mean, the first time I came out where you could begin to see it as complete, you know, I've been visualising this for years, mm. you know, how it's going to work out. Da, 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 da. Mm. But I can't, I mean, I, 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 you know, it took me days to sort of recover, if that's the word, mm. you know. It's like, because it's not me. This is not me. It mm. really isn't. You know, I know I've done the pictures and all the rest of it, but it's like, this is because of Pavanoko. Mm. It's because of the community and the communities <coughs> over time, because of the wider movement, because of all the experience I had from other people doing individual sadhana painting. I mean, that was priceless, all that. Mm. You know, trying to understand other people's ways of seeing things and what's important to them. And, and all that, because this is, you know, this is obviously very different, this is for public, mm. you know, I know it's not people off the street, you wouldn't do stuff like this in an urban centre, you know, where people are just coming in, this is for a retreat centre, mm. but, and I said right at the beginning, I mean, you know, we'll change the order around as we go on, we might repaint some pictures, you know, it's, until we've got every little space filled, we can't look at it as a piece of work and think, does this work? Mm. Yeah. You know, and it's down to the guys using it as a shrine room. So say, is this actually conducive? Is this an improvement on what was here before? Mm. Or not? You know, and that's mm. all down to us you know, just swapping notes, mm. you know, talking about it. Mm. You know, and quite often people don't... One of the things I discovered doing the Sardar paintings is almost every single person <coughs> said that it revolutionised their Sardar. Mm. Before I'd even done the painting. Mm -hmm. It was just me asking them questions about their sadhana. Because I mean, almost to a man, well, a woman, um, people would say to me, I'm not very good at visualising, mm -hmm. you know, can't really meditate, but I think a picture might help. Mm -hmm. you know, that's such a common sort of thing. But you start talking to them about the picture that they want, and you say, okay. You know, what size? What's in the background? You know, is it one of those little Chinese landscapes or is it the sky? Oh no, it's the sky. Okay, what sort of blue do you want? Is it, you know, morning, evening? Oh no, no, it's, it's, it's probably, you know, early spring, you know, late afternoon. I said, oh, hang on, that's a bit specific. <laughs> <laughs> can't visualise. <laughs> but you slowly unpack it. And there's all this stuff going on, yeah, yeah. you know, which was incredibly heartfelt, you know. But they were almost finding out about it themselves because no one ever asked them. Mm. You know what I mean? And all these people that tell me they can't visualise things, there's all sorts of stuff going on, which is really important. Mm. But they never talk about it, even to themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah I reckon people are way, way ahead of what they think they are. Mm. It's just they don't give it credit because it's not what it says in the book, mm. you know, soap powder. That must be benefited for that, that we, uh, you know, there's going to be a prostration practice in here and I want to make sure we all get a, you know, get, get a break, but I just want to finish by, I mean I can't do this enough, but just by thanking you so much on a, on a Kapoor. Well this room, this, this room is a, a remarkable room. By anyone's estimation, it's a remarkable room. I've never known a, a room like it. Um, 
you know, as I say, for me, it's half cave, half medieval painting, half modernist experiment, uh, half in, you know, environmental space. You know, um, but you've dedicated your life to creating images of our sadhanas, creating images of our imagination. That's enriched our life and enriched our culture. You're, you're, you're saying that this room is a came, comes into being because the culture needs it. Well, and I think what art does is, is take that back and refill, really you know, sort of invigorate that culture. Yeah. And you've really done that. You've invigorated our culture. But by... not, this, this would never happen. You know, I've never do, I've done this on my own. Yeah. You know, it's because of a community. Mm. You know, by that I mean, you know, the extended, yeah. wider yeah. community. And the fact that, you know, the guys at Pavaloka had the balls to take it on, you know, come up mm. with it. Mm. You know, and, and, and see it through, you know, year after year mm. sort of thing, you know. And, you know, I find that remarkable. Mm. And we find you remarkable. Well, no, <laughs> you know, it's not like the early days I do a picture, which is a good job, why not, that? So, you know, that's the huge cover to put it in. Yeah. It's like, it's taken a long time mm. yeah, to get yeah. down to this, because people yeah. thought if something didn't have the veneer of antiquity of a foreign yeah. culture, it couldn't possibly be valid. That's right, yeah. yeah. You know, I must say, I mean, I said on the open day thing, I mean, do remember, I mean, this shrine room only exists because of all of you. Mm -hmm. You know, you're as much a part of this happening. It's like, you know, I, and I don't, I don't mean that just as a sort of nice thing to say. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, there wasn't a community that was taking practice seriously. There's been no need for this. You know, I, 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 you know I'm not short of things to paint. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've not done... I've not done one of my own paintings for like nearly 10 years, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, because this has got so sort of time consuming and everything. I thought, well, no, put, whereas before they were running in parallel. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I thought yeah. that was quite important. Yeah, you know, I but I thought, no, one, I haven't got the room, also, I haven't got the energy, because I'm slowing down, you know. I mean, the, 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 the Vagio Dini nearly killed me. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the, the loss of that department seems to be going. Touch wood. Quite okay, it's quite good. <laughs> but it is because of the community. No community, meaning all of you, no pictures. Mm -hmm.